Hello and welcome to WePC Benchmarks. My name is Seb and today I'm taking you through Far Cry 6 Optimization. The game has just been released and it's the next release of the popular franchise. Exploring the depths of Yara, a fictional Caribbean island ruled by the dictator Castillo. And it is another lovely installation into the franchise, which just lets you explore exciting and bright worlds with a variety of weapons and vehicles. And have cute companions like Chorizo. He seems to be further into the game than I anticipated and couldn't really justify playing more without doing this guide. So, how does it run? Well, we tested it with an RX 580 and Ryzen 5 600X and on ultra settings, it was averaging up to 45 frames per second. And so with only half the fee RAM being used and not getting a smooth 60 FPS, there is always room for improvement. Heading over to video settings, we start off with the monitor settings. Here you want to make sure it's set up to your specific monitor. With your video adapter, you want your powerful GPU. This is more specific to laptops mostly, as to distinguish between onboard and actual GPU graphics. Then refresh rate. You want it to have it to your monitor settings, and for window mode, it's best to have it on full screen for a smoother experience, with the display resolution matching your native and desktop resolution for the best experience. The rest should all be fine, except maybe your game has decided to run on the wrong monitor or at the wrong aspect ratio, you can change it here. Then you get to the hard hitting settings under the quality tab where we start off with texture filtering. This option changes how well the textures are applied and colored correctly. And it even warns you on the option that taking it to low will lower the resolution of the textures. And there is some loss of quality with the lower settings, but it's not too major. And you can see it has reduced the VRAM load by about half of a gigabyte. So it can be a helpful setting for those with lower VRAM amounts, but the average frame rate does not increase that much. So I just recommend setting this to high. The big performance hitter is next in shadows. This setting has the opportunity to give you around 10 FPS on average between ultra and low, and it does somewhat affect the quality of them, mainly having less of them and then becoming sharp on lower settings and not as blended as you would expect shadows to be. But honestly, that doesn't feel like a bad compromise. So I'd set the shadows to low. Next is geometry and vegetation, which changes the complexity complexity of the geometry and plants of the world. So lower makes the world more simplistic and less dense, but it's not a serious change and there is some FPS to be gained by lowering it. So I would set it to medium. Environment just says it adjusts graphical details of the environment. I couldn't really discern any difference, but in the menu and FPS, it does seem to have an effect. There seems to be just a couple of frames in it. And from the preview in the menu, it looks like it tones down the lighting effects and less occlusion, making it look less realistic and not blended. With it not having much difference, I'd recommend just setting it to high. Next up is water. And this simply changes the quality of the water, specifically how much detail in the waves and edges, as well as the quality of the splashing. Even with that, there is not much difference in frame rate, both near or away from water, but there is some when swimming at times so I'd recommend turning it down to medium. Terrain is up next and affects the graphical details of, well, the terrain. And it looks like lowering the setting makes it less detailed. There is some FPS to be gained, and so we recommend lowering it to medium. Volumetric fog is another name for god rays. So this setting is for how good they look. Lower settings will make them look more disjointed and scattered, but I don't know how often you will come across any. As in my playing, I didn't spot any obvious ones. Guess you'll need the sun in the right place in the right environment, and you might just about see them. But even so, turning it down to medium is recommended for a couple of FPS. Next up is anti-aliasing, which offers three options, TAA, SMAA, and OFF. The option is there to smooth the edges via different methods. TAA merges multiple frames, past and present, to create a better smoothness, but at a bigger penalty. SMAA enhances detection of patterns and diagonals to try to smooth them via a blending of close pixels. And OFF just doesn't even bother to try. So with not much frame rate difference, I would recommend just leaving this on TAA. Motion is the next SAP category, and these are for personal preference, with motion blur, which I always turn off, camera shakes, and poisoned or drunk effects. The last quality options are for ray tracing and Fidelity FX CAS. On our GPU, we can't use ray tracing, so we focus on the Fidelity FX CAS. This option is for a mixed ability to sharpen and scale an image. So in conjunction with TAA, it's meant to restore some detail in images. So it does have an impact on performance, and so I recommend leaving it off. The next sub is color, and it's also depend on your screen. And here you can adjust brightness, contrast, and gamma to make it look best on your display. Onto the next tab, and the first option is for VSync, which is for synchronizing your game's frame rate to your screen's refresh rate. So this does cap your FPS, but can cause screen tearing, so it's up to you. But I chose to turn it off. Frame rate lock is the same, that it will lock your frame rate, but you get to choose at what, so 
keep it off for uncapped, or set it to a value you're just above in frame rate and want to keep it on to have a stable gameplay experience. The next option is for field of view scaling, and this is the horizontal degrees you will be able to see. And this tends to be of personal preference. Like I usually set mine to 90, as the lowest option is 60 and feels very enclosed. There is some performance hit, a couple of FPS, as there's more on screen at a time, but this is worth it if you need it. Adaptive resolution will lower your game's resolution to try and reach the target FPS, which can be annoying and will make the game look worse, so I'd recommend keeping it turned off. Next is resolution scale, and this option allows the game to render above or below the window resolution, and so lowering the scale will render a lower resolution and increase performance, but at a worse quality. And at higher scales, it will render a higher resolution, taking up more performance for some quality, so it's best to keep this at one. The last option is for AMD's FSR technology, which will render the game at a lower resolution and then apply upscale to try and make it look closer to the target resolution. This is a great technology to improve performance, but only for the higher settings, as balanced and performance at 1080p look very smeared and don't look too great, seemingly becoming more out of focus. So unless you really need that extra FPS, I would keep this setting off. So there you have it, the optimization guide for Far Cry 6. We are now getting a nice average of 60 frames per second, an increase of 14 FPS on average over ultra settings, so a solid 25% increase. And now you get to enjoy your game at a nice and smooth frame rate. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video and it has helped you in some way. And now hopefully you can enjoy the game at a much better frame rate. I myself am looking forward to playing through this over the weekend. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.